Today we've come out to the McConkie Ranch Petroglyph site, which I think ties into a legend of a place called Kirishinab. And the story for me begins in southern Utah at a place called Kanash, which is named after a brother of Chief Wakara. And when the pioneers came through, along with Brigham Young, Brigham Young himself remarked that Chief Walkara was a great warrior and that he owned basically all of the Great Basin. And Walkara nowadays is considered a member of the Ute tribe, but more closely he was related to the Shoshone. But in the Ute language, his name translated to Keeper of the Yellow Metal. And when Brigham Young talked about Chief Wakara, he said that he was heir to th the Yellow Metal or to this sacred lineage of people within the Ute tribe because they would marry throughout these different bands and tribes to keep their bloodline going. And what legends have spread around this place at McConkie Ranch is that it was a uh, tribe of warriors. And if you want to actually follow over here, uh, the spiral is a Hopi or Navajo symbol which means to journey, which means that this tribe must have come through. And I would say that I have not heard of any gold deposits being found here, so the legend of the lost gold mine would probably be metal being brought from other tribal areas, from a great migration. And if we continue over here, we can see that it was a warrior tribe. Uh, the local tribes around here don't usually like talking about this, but they do have a head that they're holding. And these heads are portrayed a long ways along this panel and the entire area goes quite far up into the valley there and the legend also stems from he was buried after making peace with the settlers after a short war uh, and when he was buried they dug his grave up some years later and found nothing and it said that he was brought up into the uh, Uinta Mountains quite a distance away from where he died in Kanosh and he was buried in this sacred ancient gold mine a place that was had his grandparents and he was buried along with his his rifles and his uh when they buried him in Kanosh it was with his wives and two slave children and several horses and they brought those bodies up to be buried in the ancient gold mine and there's legends of gold mines all around this part of the uh the Uinta Mountains you have the Lost Roads gold mine you have Kirishinab and you have uh the place where Butch Cassidy buried his treasure but one of the reasons why these legends spread if you want to continue over here just a little bit more you've got the headdresses and a lot of these uh, petroglyphs are not depicted with metal on them and I'm going to splice in videos all throughout uh, me talking but they do have metal headdresses and it looks to me like they have some kind of uh, really good metalworking skills and the uh, at the very end there the spiral tells me that they have journeyed a far distance possibly from places that had uh, the yellow metal or gold. But if we continue over here, I just kind of wanted to show some interesting things. Um, as you continue further down the valley, the petroglyphs get more into petroglyph territory, but these are pictographs. And these are this, this panel of rock art right here is the only place I've seen these stick figure pictographs. But uh, as we continue over here, you can see probably their kings are depicted which, with much, much larger feet. Probably some kind of a, a symbol of how uh, maybe virile they were. But again, up here, you've got another head hanging off of his shoulders. And he's got a large headdress and a spear on in the background, which depicts him as a tribal warrior. But if you want to uh, kind of zoom in up there, they've got their headdresses, or uh, not their headdresses, but their, their chest panels of metal. And it, it's usually like nine different metal squares they have. And clearly depicting a culture of, of metal workers, I think, uh, a very rich culture, which was moved out of this valley. And just to the south of us, we have the Uinta Reservation where they were moved. And uh, the legends around here of the Skinwalker, which I don't buy into because we're very far from Navajo territory, but they may have been spread to keep people from looking for these treasure mines, these lost gold mines or uh, deposits of sacred material that was handed down by a sacred lineage of royalty of the Ute tribe. 